Welcome to our meeting. The date is August 27, 2024. The time is 7 p.m. This is an open meeting of the Grand Island City Council. The City of Grand Island abides by the Open Meetings Act in conducting business. A copy of the Open Meetings Act is displayed in the back of this room as required by state law. The City Council may vote to go into closed session on any agenda item as allowed by state law. I now ask that you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The City Clerk will now perform roll call. Councilmember Mendoza will be absent. Councilmember Kaczynski will be absent. Councilmember Hazi will be absent. Councilmember Sheard. I'm here. Councilmember Pollock. <laughs> Present. Councilmember Fitzky. Present. Council President Stelk. Present. Councilmember Nickerson. Present. Councilmember Lanfear. Here. Councilmember Conley. Present. And Mayor Steele. Present. Also present are Jill Grenier, the city clerk, Laura McAloon, the city administrator, Patrick Brown, the assistant city administrator, chief financial officer, Carrie Fisk, the city attorney, Keith Kurtz, the public works director, and Matthew Gleason, the finance director. Individuals who have appropriate items for city council consideration should complete the request for future agenda items form located at the information booth. If the, if the issue can be handled administratively without council action, notification will be provided. If the item is scheduled for a meeting or study session, notification of the date will be given. I understand Mr. Nickerson wishes to pull consent agenda item 6i. Are there any other consent agenda items that council members would like to pull for additional discussion? Hearing none, we will continue. A sign-up sheet was available in the lobby for individuals wishing to provide input on any of tonight's agenda items. If you did not sign up to speak on an agenda item, please come forward, state your name, and the agenda topic on which you will be speaking. We will continue, but before we start our agenda, I would like to take a moment to reflect on the importance of keeping our city clean and well-maintained, not just for ourselves, but for the many visitors we welcome every year to the Nebraska State Fair. This is an event that brings thousands of people to Grand Island, and their impressions are shaped by what they see as they walk our streets, visit our parks, and enjoy our local businesses. A clean and attractive streetscape does more than make a good impression. It fosters a sense of community pride. When our streets are free of litter, public spaces are well maintained and cared for, and our neighborhoods are vibrant and thriving, it sends a powerful message. It shows that we care about our city, we care about each other, and we care about the future we are building together. A cleaner community encourages engagement, supports local businesses, and can even influence people's decisions when they are considering where to live, work, and raise a family. Grand Island is a place of opportunity and growth, and we want that to be reflected in every corner of our city. I urge each of us to take pride in Grand Island, whether it's picking up that piece of litter or maintaining our own properties, every small action contributes to the bigger picture. We want, our, we want our visitors to leave with memories of a city that is not only welcoming and vibrant, but also clean and cared for. This is our home, and it's up to each and every one of us to make sure we're putting our best foot forward. So let's get out and keep our city clean and beautiful for others to enjoy, along with our own enjoyment. Is there a motion to approve uh, to approve the consent agenda item 6A through 6S with the exception of I.
Mrs. Fitzke. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to approve the consent agenda with the removal of I. Thank you. Mr. Lanfear. I second. Thank you, and it's nice to see you again, Mr. Lanfear. Nice to be here. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion adopted. We will take up consent agenda item 6I, field training contract between the Grand Island Fire Department and Panhandle EMS <coughs> training. Chief Schmitz, good evening. Good evening. I'm here to answer any questions about item 6I. Uh, why don't you just give us a brief overview of what it is. Sure. Uh, the Grand Island Fire Department, uh, obviously we're a premier service, at least in my eyes, and uh, part of that, uh, that service is to train other paramedics. And uh, paramedic students and EMT students have to do a certain amount of ride time to get exposure to taking care of patients in the emergency uh, realm. Uh, we have several contracts with other agencies, and it allows those students to come get that experience, but better yet, Selfishly speaking, we use it for a recruitment tool. We bring in these students and we teach them how to become a better EMT or paramedic. And we also try and recruit them and it's been pretty successful over the past years. As far as the number of contracts, I'd have to defer to Russ and the hours, but Russ, do you have anything to add? Besides the one we're asking you to approve tonight, we have contracts with uh, 10 colleges and universities that we accept students from for both EMTs and paramedics. And uh, he said various hours, the EMT has to put in 10 clinical hours over, or yeah, 10 clinical hours and at least five patient contacts. The AEMT, which I don't have an answer to because that's the contract you're approving tonight, so we've not really done any of those. But even at the paramedic level, they do 620 clinical hours out in the field to get their certification. Thank you. Council members, uh, is there a motion? Mr. Nickerson? I make a motion we approve 2024-187. Mr. Sheard. Thank you, I'll second that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Nickerson? Yeah, I just wanted to, you to share that a little bit tonight, and I don't know how often this happens, but it just sounds like a good program that you all are involved in and, and helping educate and give people experience in the field that you're helping them with. And how often do you do this in the course of a year? Is this something that happens quite? Yes, the students. Almost daily. Is that between, right? Between the 10 colleges. No kidding. I had no idea. Most of the colleges run two EMT sessions a year and two paramedic sessions, and they pretty much put out clinical hours all year long. Wow, excellent. Well, I just thought it was something worth sharing because I just haven't really paid much attention to that in the past, but it's also a potential recruiting tool, you said, so why not take advantage of that? All right, thank you. Please vote. Motion adopted. We will continue with our public hearings. 7A, public hearing request from Peacock Lounge, 2430 North Broadwell Avenue for a Class C liquor license. Mrs. Grenier. Um, an application for a Class C liquor license was filed with the Liquor Control Commission and received by the city on July 21st, 2024. A notice to general public of date, time, and place of hearing was published on August 17th. Along with a notice to, uh, to applicant of date, time, and place of hearing was mailed on July 31st, 2024 with chapters, Chapter 4 City Code Alcoholic Beverages. Departmental reports were received as required by city, co city code and recommendation is to approve upon final inspection. Public hearing is now hope open. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item? If not, public hearing is now closed. Council, the action item on the request from Peacock Lounge is resolution 2024-198. Is there a motion? Mr. Lanfear. I move that we approve 
Item 2024-198. Thank you, sir. Mr. Conley. I'll second that motion. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion adopted. Resolution 8A, consideration of approving fiscal year 2024-2025 annual budget for Fawner Park Business Improvement District and setting date for Board of Equalization. Mr. Gleason, good evening. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, so this is the Fawner Park uh, Business Improvement District, the 2024-2025 budget, so fiscal year 25. Um, uh, again, I'll speak to it um, from what I know of it. Um, so we have on the left column there, uh, well, the second to the left column is the 23-24 budget that was um, put forth. Um, and Fawner Park, um, sorry, it's got an extra K there, so I just noticed that. Fawner Park BID, um, unlike some of the other BIDs uh, that are um, valuation based, this one is actually based on front footage, so how many, how many feet of, uh, uh, on the street they are. And so the budget for last year was 1075 a, a square foot, uh, not a square foot, 1075 a for front footage, and that's going to be the same for the projected and the proposed 25. Uh, the budgeted revenue, um, because they're keep, keeping it the same, would be that same 53202 um, So they're um, trying to stay flat, 0% growth. Uh, planned carryover, um, and then the special assessments from that line above. And then the interest, so basically this year's budget to the projected, same carryover, special assessment. Um, we found out last time that they don't always get every dollar that they're assessing, so um, those do get turned over to collections, but um, so they're a little bit short there. Um, but then the interest um, rates are much better than they thought they were going to get 250 and they've got 905. So that gives them their uh, the revenue. And then the appropriations, the contract services is mostly um, a business that does uh, landscaping and you know um, stuff like that, keeping everything looking good. They got some other things. Um, they were under um, with some of them, the repair and maintenance um, and the snow and ice removal. And so um, the expenses are less than what they had budgeted. So they were gonna have an annual excess of 801, but we think they'll have an annual excess of 3768. And then that'll roll forward to next year's budget. Same amount of revenue going kind of back to the interest revenue because the feds are going to start lowering that, so we don't know. Uh, the 50000 is a new um, item this uh, year. Uh, we just had the meeting um, last Wednesday, I think, and they were um, thinking that perhaps they could look for some grant funding to be able to do some things um, on their... Um, for their street, streetscapes and all that. Um, so uh, we just put a number in here, 50,000 for revenue, and then it's the same 50,000 down here for other expenditures. Um, so it's just kind of an in and out because it had, you have to have uh, the authority to be able to spend the money. Um, and if they don't get it, then they don't get it or whatever. But um, they're, they're trying to, um, the mulch is just kind of like, it blows out and it's kind of not and they got to repl replace it all the time and they've got to more with the weeds and, and herbicide and all that sort of stuff so they're trying to get it to where they can put in like river rock or something that would be kind of a permanent um it's uh, more expensive up front but then it'll last for and look really nice for for a long time um and then here and again that contract services was again the uh the business that does that for them that uh, takes care of all the uh, landscaping and keeping it beautiful. Uh, we went back to some of the, you know, up a little bit for, we, we basically kind of mirrored the, the 23, about 23, 24 budget. So we went back up to those just in case for repairs and maintenance because sometimes the sprinkler heads are getting hit and all that sort of stuff. So um, doing that. And I'm just trying to, so they'll end with an annual excess, hopefully, of $2,060. Um, 
that's what I know. I'll open it up for any questions or comments or concerns or just. First, I'm going to uh, ask for a motion. Oh, C sorry. Council, uh, thank you, by the way, for your presentation. Council members, uh, do you have a motion regarding resolution 2024-199? Mr. Sheard? Thank you. I move that we pass resolution 2024-199. Thank you. And Mrs. Fitzke? I would second that. Thank you. And now, uh, discussion. Please vote. Motion adopted. Again, thank you, Mr. Gleason. Thank you. The next item is resolution 8B, approving fiscal year 2024-2025 fee schedule. Again, Mr. Gleason. Thank you, sir. Um, so uh, you all have this in your packet. Uh, it's 14 pages long, so uh, when it put into a PDF, um, same thing here, it's just in Excel, so uh, we printed it to a PDF to make it easier. Um, we've got the 22 column, the 23 column, 24, and then the 25 is the proposed. All the stuff in red is the differences. So um, the first one is, so we're not gonna go through line by line because that would take crazy amount of time. So we'll, um, I know there's some interest in the redevelopment plan adoption amendment and Mr. Uh, Chad Nabity was, would uh, come up to speak to that a little bit. Sure. Or do we, do we need a motion or how's this work? Um, why don't you finish your presentation? Okay, okay. They know I'm here for questions. Okay, so we'll just run through it real quick and then if there's questions later, I know there's some questions. So, um, so the redevelopment plan is kind of more of a tiered look versus just the flat fee um, for that. Uh, the library, um, free on the ch charges, uh, interlibrary loan is going to go up a little bit. Uh, the big thing there I know will be a discussion later is uh, there's uh, uh, for the first time meeting room rental rates um, for the different um, uh, rooms that they have in the, in the library. Um, and I think there should be someone here from the library. I know uh, the, the library director is not able to be here, but I think she has a representative for those questions. Uh, the cemetery division looks like it has quite a bit of changes. Um, and these are all under parks and recreation. And I believe Todd uh, McCoy will be here if you have questions about those. But so the cemetery looks like we're going up a little bit and most of it, there's a private, Columbarium internment is a new one. Now we're to the volleyball program, recreation division, volleyball program. Got some changes on some fields. Aquatics, some changes at the pool, season passes, water park. Looks like water park, not so much the fees that are changing, but maybe the, the descriptions over here. Uh, the golf course from uh, Landscapes Golf Management. Um, I know we have uh, Sedona here, so if she needs to uh, speak to this, but it looks like those are going up a little bit. Uh, just, I'm sure, stay with inflation and all the things. So we've got those quite a bit. Cart, rent, cart rental. Um, the Heartland Public Shooting Park. Um, all these lines came out because their operating agreement um, is different than like the, land, the golf one. The golf one, the way we did that operating agreement was you all have the ability to set the prices and stuff. But the Heartland Public Shooting Park, we kind of did a different operating agreement with them where they're able to set the prices for the market so they know, you know, what's or if they need to change midway or all that sort of stuff. So theirs is basically, since um, Hornaday took over, theirs is just removing all of these um, fees, but it's not free, because I thought, oh, maybe it's all free now. <laughs> it's not free, it's just uh, they will be doing that. Uh, the Stolly Park train, looks like we got some changes. Community field house, rentals, uh, batting cage. 
just a lot of, as we saw last time, Parks and Rec has a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff under its purview. The planning and zoning, uh, we changed some stuff there, up about 50 bucks. Uh, down here, 10 bucks, 25 bucks. Just kind of going up a little bit, 50 bucks. And then we're removing some of these. Um, and again, I'm hoping Mr. Uh, Chad Nabity could help if you guys have questions about that. Um, some of the GIS electronic publications, um, we're removing those fees. Same thing for a floodplain letter of map interpretation. These are all the same. Oh, the sewage, uh, sewer service charge, and I'm sure um, Mr. Keith Kurse could speak to this, but um, unlike the electric and the water that you have to do a certain way, this is in the, in the, the fee schedule here. So the customer service charge went up a little bit, just everything went up a little bit, but um, I'm sure he would be able to speak to BOD over, you know, some of these things. Yeah, this is all still sewer. Oh, here's the landfill. Um, had some changes, a little bit up. Transfer station, a little bit up. The compost site, then the utility service fees. Um, these are what uh, the electric city dividend rate and the water city dividend rate that you guys um, put into effect when uh, when you were voting on those. And then we're taking out this backflow processing fee. Looks like we're going up a little bit there. What are we talking about here? Utility services. So there's, these are changes too. So valve operation for flushing testing water services larger than two inches, not requiring sampling. Okay, so I'm guessing is this sewage still, or is this? Yeah. Looks like they're going up a little bit. So that's the initial presentation. But um, like I said, I have some people here to help me to get you guys better answers, or um, I'll try to find an answer for you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Gleason. Is there a motion regarding resolution 2024-200? Mr. Sheard. Thank you. I move that we pass resolution 2024-200. Thank you, Mr. Landfear. I second. Thank you. Discussion, Mr. Nickerson. Thank you, Matt, for sharing those fees. Most of them are typically incremental increases, which we see, but the ones that did pique my interest are a couple that you've talked about. And, when we get to the library, I need to just make sure that it's okay since we have a library rep that I can ask him to come up or the mayor will ask him to come up under the new rules. Okay, so it's all okay to do that. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, just making sure we're playing by the right rules, whatever they are nowadays. Anyway, since this is up, Chad, why don't you come up? I know you and I've had a conversation before and I will just share with the council my concerns and more questions and concerns, Certainly. and there are some concerns. Uh, you know, when we see everything up there has been added except for the initial, was it, well, it was 1,100 at one point. Correct. You increase that to 1,500, then we added a bunch of layers after that, little stair step things that end up to $10,000 for some of these, and that's. You're right. That's what I'm looking for. What is the logic well, behind it? Um, I stood here probably seven, eight months ago and mentioned that Wood River, or not Wood River, but North Platte charges $5,000 for an application. And several council members and the mayor reached out to me and said, what do you mean they're charging $5,000 for every application? And what are we charging? Uh, good questions. So what we're doing is taking a different approach. My personal and professional opinion is that if you are doing a smaller project that's under that $500,000 worth of TIF, $5,000 is a big, starts to get to be a pretty big percentage of what you're asking for. And that may be impacting your ability to do the project. So if we scale this, 
and we stair step it based on the size of the project and how much money they're asking for, is it, is it maybe just a little bit of socialism that the people at the top are paying to help subsidize the people at the bottom? Yes, it is. I have talked to our developers that are doing these big projects, and while none of them are thrilled about an increase in cost, they all understand it. And they all understand that there are expenses that the city has long term going into these projects because we are tracking them from the time they start until that project is done. And so for the city, it's a, pretty much a 20 year commitment to a given project. And that's if it's a 15 year TIF from start to finish. So that's really the, it's up to council. You set the policy and we have in the past, these numbers, the 1100 was originally set because that's what it cost us to run the advertisements when we had to publish maps. That was, that was a direct expense from the city clerk's budget and all this did was reimburse that direct expense. This is recouping a little bit of the expense and putting the burden to pay for it on the applicant. Based on what, <clears throat> based on what you said, who's charging 5,000? Um, North Platte. North Platte. On any TIF application. Any TIF. Any idea how we compare to other folks besides North um, Platte? I know Omaha ends up collecting on the back end a percentage of the TIF, and they actually pay for, I think, two and a half employees full time based on the TIF that they do. So there are other ways to do this, but the, this would be consistent with what we've done in the past and also expand it. Um, at this point, with the TIF projects that have been approved since last October, there were six of them that would have paid $10,000. There are two that would have paid $1,500. You've also adopted the micro TIF program, which means that those really small projects that are one, that are specific to a single property, pay a $50 fee that is set by statute. That the legislature set that, we don't get to, we don't get to mess with that but it gives some options for those smaller projects and then ramping up. Okay, I'd just like to understand the logic yep. behind the numbers and I guess I can't argue with it. I just think we're all feed to death so many times, but if there's a reason for the fees, I'm okay with that. And okay. according to what you're saying, compared to North Platte, someone's still getting a bargain at up to $3 million here. Right. So right. So we're still underneath some of our competitors. I, I don't know. We'd call them peer, but yeah. So it's peer still peer cities. Peer cities. So it's <laughs> it's still a bargain, if you want to call it that. And you are increasing your baseline anyway, up four hundred dollars. And I would perfectly understand that. But I just thought it's a good thing to yep. talk about and understand because this is no small fee increase here when you look at it. Uh, exactly. Okay. And it it is something that councils should be very aware of that this change is being made and I appreciate the opportunity to come explain it. Good, all righty, thanks. So let's, let's shift gears then. Matt, if you wanna bring up the rentals for our library, and I know we have Sean here, and uh, I know you're excited, Sean, about coming up here to represent the library. But I just wanted to know a little bit of history because all I see, all we see as a council member are numbers on a fee schedule, but we don't know the story behind all of them. I just kind of like to know the story behind this one. Okay. Mr. Klee, please state your name. Uh, Sean Klee. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm the Reverence Collection Services Librarian. Um, Selene's out on medical leave. I'm um, in charge while she's on leave um, of the library. Um, our meeting rooms, uh, the library's offered meeting rooms for use for nonprofit and governmental use for many, many, many years. Um, this change is actually, the fees actually apply just to for-profit use. Currently, for-profit businesses um, are not allowed to book the meeting rooms under our current meeting room policy. So after discussion with our library board and our library council and looking at library services, which we've tried to 
modernize and bring into line with other libraries, such as uh, removing overdue fines and fees, which we've done a couple years ago. We looked at other libraries, and most libraries allow uh, the for-profit use of the meeting rooms at an hourly fee. Okay. And you say prior to this, they were not allowed to do that? Yeah, cor correct. Currently, only nonprofit and governmental use of the meeting rooms is allowed. Okay, and based on any interest you've seen in the past, do you think this is going to be a popular thing for some of those folks? Um, I yes, we believe so. Uh, we get um, a ha on average a handful of calls a week from businesses that are looking to use the meeting rooms for either training sessions for their staff or other sorts of things like that. Um, so we feel that this would, uh, this would help provide a space in Grand Island, which there really isn't many spaces for meetings like that to occur. Um, and it would also help offset any revenue lost from the overdue fines, which wasn't that much to begin with. But. When you do have some very nice meeting rooms, especially that one big one, I don't know what yeah. they're called, <laughs> but you've got a very nice large meeting room that gets used Quite a bit. A lot of times, the nonprofits use just a small section of that, you know, because right. it's so big. But they only need so much room. Do you see any conflicts with the amount of use that it gets now? That to where the these folks come in and want to dominate it and not allow the nonprofits to use it, or is that just in your ability to schedule that? Um, we do have that's in built into our calendar system that we have. Um, the library board has also put in. Um, to their policy that a for-profit group that's paying the rental fees would only be able to book for up to four hours per day and only once per quarter. So that would help um, keep a yeah. individual business from, say, coming in and using a space every week or every three days or whatever. Very good. Sounds like a lot of thought has gone into it then. So yeah. it's very good. Well, it was just, it's again one of those things that you don't see the narrative behind the fees. And I appreciate you coming and sharing that with me today. Okay, thank you, Sean. I do have one more question, and this is just going to be a general question that we may or may not know because we just talked about the Heartland Shooting Park and any and the fee changes. Do we know if they've made many adjustments? Are they were we on track with our fee schedule that it was decent, or do we know anything about that in particular? I, it's just a question, just out of curiosity. Have they gone up in price, down in price, or they, were we right where we needed to be? I have not had a discussion with their upcoming fee. I know that they kept the fees the same um, when they initially took over. Um, haven't really had a discussion. Um, and Matt kind of mentioned it. It's, it's a little bit of a dis different situation, whereas the revenue that's generated at the golf course is actually city revenue, and the all the expenses and all the revenue is from the Hornaday management company. So we don't have that information. Just curious. I didn't know if we were right where we wanted to be or if they see some advantages to increasing that a little bit or not. But I will say this. I have received no complaints so far. There you go. Okay, super. All righty. Well, that's all the questions I had on the fee schedule. And thank you for sharing that today. Please vote. Motion adopted. Ordinance 9A, we do not have enough members to suspend the statutory rules regarding ordinances. So 9A will be on second reading. It is number 9982, consideration of vacation of a portion of easement in Stewart Place subdivision 2104 and 2120 South Blaine Street. This is on second reading. Mr. Kurtz. Good evening. So second reading, uh, some of you have heard this before, but we had a request to, uh, from one of the property owners here on Stewart Place subdivision to uh, apply for a license agreement so that they could build a garage in their backyard. Um, kind of looked at it, um, that easement back there was dedicated long, long ago, and uh, the lot lines at that time were a little different than they are today. Uh, we reached out to all the utility companies. Um, nobody has anything in this easement. Nobody needed this easement for anything in the future. So um, we are proposing to vacate that easement such that they could uh, go ahead with their building plans. 
Thank you. And is there a motion? Mrs. Fitzke. Thank you, Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the ordinance 9982. And Mr. Stelt. I second the motion, Mr. Mayor. Thanks to both of you. Any discussion? Ordinance number 9982, an ordinance to vacate a portion of an existing easement and to provide for filing this ordinance in the Office of Register of Deeds of Hall County, Nebraska, to repeal any ordinance of parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, and to provide for publication the effective date of this ordinance. Please vote. Motion adopted. The last item on our regular agenda is 10A, executive session to discuss collective bargaining and the protection of the public interest. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Mr. Sheard. I move we go into executive session. Thank you, and Mr. Lanfear. I second. Thank you. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion adopted. We are going into executive session at 7.36 p.m.